Dear viewer, make sure you click on the subscribe button and the notification bell. And be the first to watch new videos of Apostle John Chi. Watch and be blessed. I want you to know that those whom God calls for any service, he makes them fit for that service. Last week we were here. The mass prayer was going on. And we encountered opposition. Et on a fait face à l'opposition. And God gave us victory. Et l'Éternel nous a donné la victoire. So before the brother comes out, let's watch. Say your mighty spirit. Dis que toi esprit de l'eau. You are the spirit. Toi esprit de la trie. You are God's spirit. Toi esprit occultiste. Threaten in my life. Qui tout monde ma vie. Threaten in my peace. Qui menace ma paix. Enough is enough. Trop c'est trop. Holy God. Look at that! Look at this young man! Look at this young man! Look at this young man! In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. This young man. This young man. Regardez le. Can you take him up? Soulevez le. He needs special attention. Il a besoin d'une attention spéciale. This young man, this young man, all around him is darkness. Partout autour de lui n'est que rempli de ténèbres. As he is here now, there's no hiding place for him. Comme il est ici, il n'y a pas de cachette pour lui. It's either the child will go or he will go. Toi, l'enfant doit aller ou lui doit aller. He belongs to a court. Il appartient dans une loge satanique. You say what? Why have you changed me? I'm waiting for the backup. Oh, you are waiting for backup? Yes. Who changed you? Your son changed me. So you are waiting for backup? Yes. Okay. I've tried. Where do you belong? Ah, I am the great master. From where? Ah, the great Illuminati. I am his master. I am his master. He has soiled his hands. He is fully involved. Il est pleinement impliqué dans cette loge satanique. When I look, I saw darkness. Lorsque j'ai regardé, j'ai vu les ténèbres partout. I begin to ask God, who is this man? Je demande à l'Éternel qui est cet homme. The Lord said, either the child will go or he will go. If he is not free. Soit il doit mourir, soit son enfant doit mourir. That's why the Lord had to arrest him. C'est la raison pour laquelle l'Éternel a how do you operate? Oh. And what is the assignment given to him? Oh. We have an assignment for him. Yes. To destroy Christian. Uh -huh. To destroy churches. Uh -huh. Anywhere he go and preach, that church begin to go down. Okay. It begin to go down. But he is turning again us. Why? Why he... did you allow him to come here? Oh. His destination was not here. He wanted to go to Prophet T.B. Joshua. From Manila, we diverted his flight ticket. Instead of Manila to Lagos, we sent him to Yaoundé. From Yaoundé, he booked another flight ticket. We can see anything. As long as he is wearing our materials that we gave to him. We can see anything that he wants to do. He wants to run away. Why? We want him to be one of our agents for the new world order. Why is he rebelling? Why? Why? The job that he has, we are the one who gave him that job. He earned more than 2,000 US dollars a month. But he can't do anything. We want to torment him. You get him we the will job. We punish him, yes. 
We give him a dog. We give him a car. We are asking for his son. He doesn't want to give us his son. Why? Because he loved the son so much. So you are asking for his son? Yes. What do you want to do with his son? Oh, we want to use the boy. We have seen the future of that boy. We want to use him. So we are going to torture him until he gives us what we want from him. We will torture him. Torture him. What do you want from him? We want his only son. We want him. You say what? Is that not simple? So it's simple to you. He signed an oath with us. Okay, he signed an oath with you. Yes. To do what? So as long as that oath do exist, he must obey the instructions. We will torture him if he will not obey. Oh, we will get the wife. For your information, the greatest mistake you have made is for allowing him to enter this arena. You say what? I said you cannot. The backup will be here any moment from now. Oh, the backup will be here any moment yes. from now. I tried shutting down the electricity. It did not work. Okay, you tried to turn off the electricity. Yes. It did not work. It did not work. The backup is coming. Wait for me, but the backup is coming. What prevented you from turning off the lights? Oh. We saw angels everywhere. You, you saw what? Can't you see them? There are angels everywhere. We saw partout. them everywhere. When we strike, they came after us. That's why I'm waiting for the backup. So Let you are waiting for the backup? Yes. yes. How, will it, how long will it take you for the backup to reach you? Oh. I need my ring back. Why have you taken it away from me? You need your ring? Yes. It is our monitoring devices. Okay. They will locate me where I am. Come on, see the ring there. Oh. Oh. Allow him to take his ring. Take your ring. Regardez cette barre dans le démon pas. Il dit qu'il utilise cette barre. Why there is fire around the ring? Why? Why there is fire? Why? I need my ring back. Remove the fire. Remove the fire. Take your ring. Remove the fire. Why? All right, the fire is up. Take the ring. Can you call your backup now? Appel les renforts on voit. Breda, Breda, Breda. Lero, Ebro, Ebre. I am the great one. I am now the untouchable. You are now what? The untouchable. You are now the untouchable. Yes. You can't cross this line. Le démon dit qu'il est intouchable. I challenge you. La ligne de bataille. The great one. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't mention that name. Huh? Don't mention that name yet. Don't mention that name. Which name? It is between you and me. Oh, between you and me. Yes, don't mention that name. Okay, can you call your master? The great one. The great one. The great one. Can you see? Can you see that? The great one. Can you see that? Okay, let me call my own master. In the name of Jesus Christ! In the mighty name of Jesus Christ!
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. They are taking out everything. Oh, no, the no. angels of God has gathered on him now to take out everything that is not of God. Les anges de l'Éternel se sont réunis sur lui pour retirer tout ce qui n'appartient pas à Dieu dans son corps. Regardez la manifestation de l'esprit maléfique. So there are other rings. Il y a aussi d'autres bagues. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. So they are working on him now. On est en train de œuvrer sur lui. But by the time they finish working on him, you will know. Lorsqu'on aura fini de travailler sur lui, vous allez vous, vous allez vous-même voir ce qui va se passer. He's free. Il est libre. Afternoon, sir. Ah, uh -uh, come. How are you? Hi, sir. Hello. He is free. He is free. Ceux que l'office de l'homme a franchi sont libres en vérité. How are you? I'm fine, sir. Can you tell us about yourself? What happened to you? I don't know. I was sitting somewhere there. Uh huh. I don't know how I find myself. Here. You don't know how you find yourself out here. Do you remember what you said here? No, sir. You mentioned something that you belong somewhere. No, sir. I don't belong to anyone. What is the ring there? That ring is from where? It was given to me. By who? In 2012, I, as a pastor in the Philippines, things were very difficult for me. And I was looking for power and money. You were looking for? Power and money. Power and money? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And I joined a, a group, they call them the Illuminati. So they, they are the one who gave me that ring. They gave you this ring? Yes, sir. There are still two remaining? Yes, sir. Yes, Where sir. are the two? They are in my bag. Pouvoir. <laughs> okay. Citizens of heaven, my name is Patrice Noah Besala. I'm a pastor and an interdenominational missionary living in the Philippines for the past eight years. I'm here today to give back all the glory to God for what God has done in my life on the last Sunday of the year 2018. And the Lord made me enter the year 2019 as a changed person. And I want to thank God as well for sending his anointed servant, Senior Apostle Genti, in our generation today. It all started while I was still small. I was still living with my parents in the village. And uh, my father was a notorious witch doctor. And uh, being a second to the last among nine children, uh, I believe in my father so much, and I believe in what he was doing. And uh, my father wanted me to inherit his uh, witch doctor business. Then I got discouraged one day when uh, he had a customer, because the customer was supposed to die. Then we killed the goat to replace uh, that person. Then after we killed the goat, we removed the intestine, part of the intestine of that goat, we tied it in a plastic and put it in the temple. Then another customer came another day. 
And he told this lady that there is a charm that was burning your house. We need to go and remove the charm. And uh, I was the one carrying the bag, going for this mission together with him. I took uh, this uh, plastic with the uh, intestine of the goat, put it in the bag. I didn't know what we were going to do with it. So when we got to the house of this lady, in the parlor, he asked me, he showed me the place. He said, this is the place. I need to dig this place in order to pull out the charm. And since in the parlor, the place is dry and it's difficult for me, then he now sent the lady outside to go and get water in order to make the work easy for me. I don't know whether the lady was alone in the house or the people of that house went out, but the lady was alone that day. So as the lady stepped out, he removed the plastic with this intestine of the goat, mixed it with the ground. Then when, as the lady came back, he now asked the lady to pour the water. And I, was, I became afraid. My question was, what if somebody had seen us? I was now shivering. Then after some few minutes, he asked me to remove, since it was already the mud. After I removed it, he looked for a small stick and pulled out this plastic and told the lady, you see, this is the charm I told you that was in your house. So I became very disappointed because I discovered that so what my father is doing is fake. It's not real. So a time came when I left the house. I traveled to Douala. And there in Douala, I met some friends. Uh, we got involved into martial art. And after that, I left Douala. My elder brother brought me to the northern part of Cameroon in um, Ngaoundal. And when we got there to Ngaoundal, I began to play football. And at the same time, I was a mass servant in the Catholic Church. As we came back from Ngaoundal, back to Douala, I was still playing football. Then one Sunday, and I decided to go and visit this, my friend, we were doing martial art together. To my greatest surprise, I met him on the road. He said he was going to church. So I was shocked because we used to go to church 6 p.m. So that after the church, we would meet with our girlfriends. And I said, okay, let me follow him. Then I followed him. It was one charismatic church in Douala. And when we entered the church, I was surprised. Everybody was happy during praise and worship. Everybody was dancing. And when the pastor began to preach, it was as if they went and told the pastor everything about my life. I was just sitting there weeping. And when the pastor made the altar call, I looked at my friend. Then he did this to me. And uh, I got up. I went in front. I surrendered my life to Jesus. And the pastor told me immediately there that, young man, God wants to use you. It was after that I asked my friend what was the meaning of that. So my friend told me to go through the uh, foundational school, uh, go through the water baptism, and encourage me to register for the Bible school. I even fill up the form for the Bible school. But my intention was not to go into that. I wanted to play football, earn money, and go to Europe and make money. Then even the day that the Bible school began, I ran away. I did not join. After that, I became frustrated. I now wanted to gather money on my own, to travel on my own. I joined the security guard so that I will be saving my salary and travel to Europe. Until one day, the company where I was working, we received the information that there is an issue with the property somewhere here in Boya. When we arrived in the place that day, that was around 7 p.m., we were taken by the population, the villagers in the place. They beat us seriously. And all the money that we had on us, they collected, the cell phone they collected. Then it was in the midst of all those noise that I heard a strong voice telling me, this is not what I want you to do. Go and obey my will. And I became afraid. I was shivering. I urinated on myself. And after I had that encounter with that voice, it was like 10 minutes after the police and the gendarme came to rescue us from that place. They escorted us out of Boya. We went back to Douala, all of us 32 security agents. And when we got back to Douala, so I went back to church. I, I inquired when was the next batch of the Bible school. And uh, when the Bible school began, I went and joined. And I graduated from the Bible school 2008. Then they were now sending me for church planting mission. Uh, I was sent to Limbe. Then after Limbe, I was sent to Bafusam. After Bafusam, I was sent to Yaounde. And from Yaounde now, I had some uh, persecution and challenges with the ministry. 
that I had to leave the ministry and join another ministry. When I joined another ministry, uh, under that ministry, there was a program that was in another ministry where we were all invited, a conference in Yaoundé. When we attended the conference, there is a lady that came from the Philippines as a missionary. After the program, so I asked permission from my spiritual leaders, which they, uh, uh, it was granted to me to assist her around. And that's how I was going with her, assisting her around. Voilà, il nous dit que lorsqu'il s'est inscrit à l'école biblique, il a suivi les cours bibliques. Quelques temps après, il est sorti diplômé de cette école biblique. Il avait des missions qu'il faisait à Douala. And uh, this lady, she could not apply for three month visa. They could only give her one month. And a time came when she had issues. And I now took her around. We were thinking that it would be better for her to, like, if she could change her nationality, then she will have no issue. And uh, it was now the chief justice, he suggested that if she is married to a Cameroonian, then we can apply for her resident permit as the spouse of a Cameroonian, which is just 60,000 francs CFA. And that's how I asked her if she was single. Her answer to me was that she was free. And that's how we developed a, a relationship and uh, we got married. Just like that, from translator to marriage. Yes, sir. Wonder shall never end. <laughs> De l'interprétation au mariage. Incroyable. Because I was uh, single that time, I was not married, so I, it was okay for me. I now decided that I had to travel to her country to meet with her parents, to see her people. Then we went to her country now. Then we launched a ministry, and I had challenges in running the ministry, so I had to look for a job in order for me to support the ministry at the same time. And looking for the job, uh, they told me that since you're married to a, a Filipino citizen, instead of making you the working visa, we can process your resident permit. The requirement was that we need to register our marriage with the Philippine government first. We don't have embassy there as well. So we went to the Department of uh, Foreign Affairs to register. When we went to get the document, the document, I was shocked. The document came out that she's legally married to a Filipino. I already had children, two children with her this particular time. And not only that she's legally married, they have three children. And I saw these children, I never knew that these children were her children. It was now that time that I recall that, oh, I saw a passport with her picture, but with a different name, meaning the passport that she used to enter Cameroon, she did not use the husband name. She used the name when she was still single. This issue now, I was broke, I was disappointed, I was discouraged. Il nous dit que lorsqu'ils sont arrivés aux Philippines avec cette femme, ils voulaient travailler, mais son désir c'était de travailler et soutenir son ministère parce que arrivé aux Philippines, il avait ouvert un ministère et il devait lui-même soutenir son ministère. Il ne devait pas compter sur les autres pour soutenir son ministère. And uh, in the midst of that frustration, having also the pressure back home, I didn't know what to do. So I, I was again disappointed and that's how I decided to put my hand somewhere, something that could help me. I went to the internet, I searched about the Illuminati and I sent them a request to join the Illuminati. They responded back to me and when they responded back to me, they were now asking me to be initiated. Alors, il nous dit que vu le choc qu'il a reçu avec cette femme, vu le fait qu'il était aussi le soutien de la famille, le gagne-pain de la famille, les membres de sa famille l'appelaient constamment pour qu'il puisse envoyer de l'argent. Il n'avait pas cet argent. Il, au contraire, il demandait qu'on lui puisse envoyer un billet d'avion pour qu'il rentre au pays. Face à cette déception, il allait sur Internet. Il a cherché des renseignements par rapport à cette loge satanique, les Illuminati. Il a envoyé une demande et c'est comme cela qu'on a répondu pour être un membre des Illuminati. When I contacted the Illuminati, so I wanted power and wealth. That is what I wanted. And I was still together with this lady. Then one day, she took my cell phone. I didn't know. Because on my cell phone, I, have my, I can check my email even from my cell phone. Then she saw the email, the exchange of email between me and the Illuminati. And she began to cause me problem, attacking me for that. Then the Illuminati warned me. They told me that that woman would be an hindrance for us. 
is either she will die or you need to do away from her. That's how I separated from her. After I separated from her now, they sent, they sent me this ring. These two rings. This one, it had the, the pyramid on it. After my deliverance, the pyramid has disappeared. It's no more on it. When I'm wearing this ring, it gives me wisdom because it symbolizes the all, O-W-L, the all, which is the, the spirit of uh, Mirneva, the goddess of wisdom. And when I'm wearing it, wherever I am, I carry influence over everybody around me in that place. And when I'm preaching, I don't need to go for prayer and fasting about the message that I will preach. I am being inspired at that particular moment when I'm preaching. And uh, whatever I'm saying, that is what people will believe. This one, this other rings, the one on it is the head of the lion, the lion's head. It symbolizes authority and power. When I'm wearing this ring, wherever I am, I have dominion over everyone in that place. I am in charge. And only my opinion, that will be considered in that place. And it leads me even to the spirit of anger when I'm wearing it. I remember many times, even in my office, I shouted on my, my supervisor, my boss, and my boss will instead be the one asking me to calm down. Even if he's the one who is right, I am wrong. But because I'm wearing this, I have dominion over him. And sometimes when I am driving on the road, if somebody just mess up with me, no matter the size and the height of that person, no matter the weight of that person, I would deal with the person very well that day when I'm wearing this ring. When I receive this ring, somebody appeared to me in my dream. And the person told me the name, give me the name of an oil company that I had to go and apply there. So I went. When you look at that position, I'm not even qualified, working as a customer operation specialist. Then I apply, they, uh, they give me the contract, I sign the contract. After I sign the contract, the person still appeared to me in the dream and uh, told me the name of the car company where I need to go and get my car. So I went there, I was the one to choose the car that I wanted. I chose the car and they processed everything for me. I got the car. Now I had a, a good job. I had a car, a nice car. One day I walked into a shopping mall and I met with a young lady, 23 years old. Uh, she was a sales lady in that shopping mall. And uh, I approached the lady. We became friends. Then uh, I had an affair with her. And later on I discovered she was pregnant. That is the time I, now, I was now invited to a particular church to preach for their fifth anniversary. And uh, the lady who was pastoring that church, she told me her prayer request was to have a husband. Then I was the answer to her prayer request. Alors, il nous dit qu'après avoir reçu un très bon travail, il avait un très bon travail, il avait une voiture de luxe, il était satisfait dans la vie. Un jour, il est dans une boutique, lorsqu'il est arrivé dans une boutique pour acheter quelque chose, il a rencontré une femme, une femme tellement charmante, c'est comme cela qu'il est entré en relation avec cette femme, et au cours de cette relation, il s'est rendu compte que cette femme était ancienne. It didn't take long, then we signed a marriage certificate, and uh, she became my wife, and she too became pregnant. Now, the other lady in the other province was pregnant, I hide it from my wife, then when the lady gave birth, I now lied to my wife that I'm going to preach in that province. I'm invited to preach in a church there. So my wife was the one who fixed my back. I traveled. When I went there, it was to go and visit this uh, other lady who gave birth to my child. And when I got there, I spent the night and I saw her wearing 
a talisman on her neck. Then I asked her who gave her the talisman. She said, it is her grandfather. Then I asked her for what reason? Because I recognized the talisman. She told me that her grandfather gave it to her for protection because she was sick. And I recognized the talisman from the Illuminati. So I now approached the father and inquired from the father. So the father told me that his father, meaning the grandfather of this lady, is the one and even show me the talisman. There is another one in the form of the book. And I remember also the Illuminati are asking me to get this talisman, the book, and the necklace. And they have already sent it. it just, I'm just waiting for it to arrive and for me to go and collect it through the post office. And here is the talisman that they send through the post office. You can see with the form of the pyramid and the all on it, which symbolizes the goddess of wisdom. And it has the all-seeing eyes in the middle, also known as the eye of providence. It is also called the devil eyes watching over his followers in the worship place. Uh, that eye also originated from the pyramid in Egypt, known as the Eye of Horus. Horus is uh, the ancient tutelary deity in Egypt. Or it is also Horus is also known as Uja, meaning the the whole one. And uh, together with this talisman. The instruction is for me to wear it on my neck as a symbol of my loyalty to the Illuminati. So when I wear this on my neck, if I am in a church preaching, uh, as long as I am wearing this, anything that I can say, it will make people like behave like crazy. They are excited. They will not even know what is pushing them. They are very excited about what I'm saying. Then, accompanied to that talisman, this ring was also sent to me. This is the all-seeing eye. And when I wear this ring, when I'm wearing it, if you are talking about me, even in your room, it will be as if I am there. I, am, I will be listening to the whole conversation. As I'm wearing this ring, if any, there is any danger around, the place where I am, I will know. And I will leave the place. If, for example, there will be an accident, I will know. And I will leave the place. I remember one day, uh, I was wearing this ring. Then I listened to the conversation of some of my colleagues in the office. They were talking about me. And the next day when I went back to the office, I told them exactly everything what they were saying. And they were shocked. Now, knowing me as a pastor, they began to call me a prophet. And that is how even in many churches, when I'm going to preach, I will wear the ring first. I'll be doing the incantation. I will be calling the great master three times, asking him for assistance to the place where I'm going. And I will know if in that church, if I wear it, people will be afraid. Then I will just put it in my pocket so that people will not be afraid. And in that church, I will talk to people, telling them some of them, I give them their names. Some of them, I give them their addresses. And they will be shocked. Some of them, I even give them their phone numbers. And this is my first time to step into that church. They will look at me as a powerful prophet in that church. And... Uh, most of the time, when I want to just camouflage as a camouflage, I will remove the talisman from uh, this chain. Then I will just put the crucifix, the cross on it. I will put the cross on it, and I just wear it as an outward, and people will be looking at me as a pastor. But they don't know that I just wear it just to, to blind their eyes, to deceive them. They now... Uh, asked me to sign an oath with them. Uh, this part, 
This is the part where I really question them very well. I question, I question them about the oath that if I sign it, is there anything that I, I will have to pay? The answer was that anybody that asked me to pay for any item from the Illuminati, then I should know that the person is a scammer, that they don't collect any money. I asked them, no, is there anything else that I will be required to give after I sign this oath? They said, no, don't worry. There is nothing that will be required. And then they, send, they still send it to my address. Here is the, the document that came. I got it from the post office. And here is the oath. When I went through the oath, I read it. So since it was not written anywhere there that I will have to give in return like human being or anything else. So it was okay for me. So I signed it. Il nous dit que quelques temps après, on lui a dit qu'il devait signer un pacte avec les membres du Milati. C'est à ce moment qu'il a scruté et s'est renseigné en profondeur pour vraiment savoir l'implication de ce pacte. On lui a dit qu'il n'y a aucune implication, qu'on ne demande aucune somme d'argent. On lui a dit qu'une somme d'argent, c'est que ce sont les fraudeurs sur Internet. Il a succombé à cela. Il a accepté à signer ce pacte avec eux. On a envoyé ce pacte via la poste à travers son courrier électronique. Vu sur ce fait, les déclarations sur cette pacte, c'était qu'il ne devait faire aucun sacrifice humain. Il a accepté à cette pacte et il a signé cela. And when the oath arrived, I went to the post office. I was together with my wife in the car. When I received the envelope, I did not open the envelope in front of my wife because I didn't want her to know what was inside. I just keep it and I drop her in the house. I went to the office. It was in my office that I opened it. I went through, I read it, then I sign, scan it, and send it to them through email. And I kept it there in my office. On the oath, it is written, upon this eternal oath, I freely pledge to dedicate my mind to the discovery of knowledge, to dedicate my soul to the pursuit of enlightenment, to dedicate my efforts to the progress of abundance, to dedicate my existence to bring all people in all places into unification. This, is, this has to do with the New World Order. The New World Order is a plan, is a project, ongoing project right now uh, by the elite, elite of the Illuminati. It is a project to rule the world in a single system of government using this, uh, one currency and using one government system. But this new world order, it will be, it will be difficult in terms of uh, uh, religious and economic standpoint because it is true the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 13 for, from verse 1 to 7 that we need to obey the leaders of the country. But the Bible also tells us in Acts of Apostles chapter 5 verse 29 that we should rather obey God than obey men. So that is where the challenge will be in the religious and economic standpoint. Because to that new, order, new world order, they will deceive people with the promises. The promises of hope and peace and uh, a nice way of living. But there is no government system that can provide the real peace. The real peace only comes from God. And the real, the real hope only comes from Jesus Christ alone. The last point on the, the oath, it says, And to dedicate my life and days upon this planet to the protection and advancement of the human species. On this day of May 9, 2017, then I sign and I put my name there as it is on the passport, Patrice Noah Besala takes this eternal pledge. After I now sign the oath, uh, the same person who used to appear to me on the dream was now coming to me, still in the dream, giving me instructions of what to do. Uh, my assignment was to go to churches, to destroy churches, and Christian in general. 
The person will come to me in a dream and show me a picture of a lady. And this lady is in a particular church. Then I will get the address of the church, the name and the address of the church. I will go there. I will introduce myself as a pastor, as an interdenominational missionary. Then I will request that I would like to be a blessing for the congregation. Now, many churches in the Philippines, they have the policy that if it is a branch, they cannot give the pulpit to somebody who is not part of their team without the approval of the headquarters. Then most of these pastors, what they will do is that the pastor will tell me, since this Sunday is my turn to preach, so I will just give you my schedule. You will preach instead of me. And uh, when I go to church, why I'm preaching? First, I will be sitting in the church when the praise and worship is going on. I will send, I will uh, confuse the mind of the people in that church. I just need to blow the air from my mouth. And once I blow the air from my mouth, that air now will go around. All those who are sitting in that church, that they are not in the attitude of prayer, they will all be in confusion. All those who are not rooted in the word of God, and they are not prayerful, they will be in total confusion. They will begin to feel weak. They will begin to feel sleepy at that time. Even if it is like the pastor of that church who is giving the exhortation, they can't understand anything. And even when the exhortation is going on, I will be interpreting the message in their mind in a different way. The pastor will be saying this, they will be getting something else, something different. And they will misquote the pastor at the end of the day. And when I will be preaching, I make sure the picture that they show me, I make sure I go to the lady, I will recognize the lady very well. I will make sure I just touch her. Because before I came, I wear the ring and I made the incantation as the instruction were given to me. And I will just touch the lady. Once I touch the lady, even if the lady was living the life of holiness for how many years? She must fall. And once I touch her, after the service, most of them, they are the one looking for my name, searching for my name on Facebook. They will send me the request. Immediately, I will ask, accept the request. And I just need to ask her through Facebook uh, contact number because I don't want to chat with them on Facebook. Once I get the contact number, I'll begin to text. I am still around that place. I will ask, just ask, do you know how to massage? The person will say, I've never done that before, but I can try. And I know this one is already inside my box. And I will give the address of the hotel where we have to meet. We will meet there for massage. And that's all. I will have an affair with the lady. And once I have an affair with her, that's how her life will begin to go down. She will be impacted with the spirit of loss. She will now be the one running after men to have an affair with men. And in churches, most of the churches, I will attack, I will go through the youth. If I'm preaching, I'm not going to have an affair with all of them. I will just have to lay hands on them. Once I lay hands on them, they will be impacted with that spirit of loss. And between them, they begin to have an affair between them. And we begin to hear about pregnancies between them. So when you are praying for the people, what happens to them? When I pray for the people, I lay hands on them. They are not receiving healing. They are not receiving deliverance. Instead, they are being impacted with the spirit of loss, the spirit of lies telling, stealing. That's how they will be impacted with those spirits. Is it those who are truly born again? When a child of God is truly born again, it is not possible because if that person is rooted, number one, rooted in the word of God, that is, the person has the knowledge of the word of God, the person is prayerful and always cover his or herself with the blood of Jesus, that person cannot be a victim. Those who are victims are those who are not rooted in the word of God. Those who are not rooted in the word of God. That is why I would encourage if you are a Christian and you are sitting in the church, do not be distracted. Please be in the attitude of prayer when you are sitting in the church. Alors, il dit davantage que les chrétiens qui sont enracinés sur la parole de Dieu, les chrétiens authentiques, ils ne peuvent pas détruire les chrétiens qui sont enracinés. 
et les chrétiens authentiques sur la parole de Dieu. And I will tell you the truth, the man of God is anointed. The man of God has a backup from God. Like here with Apostle John Chi, when the demon leaves a body, if you that you are around, you are not in the attitude of prayer, that demon can enter you if you don't take care. And also you came with your situation, you can go back with the same situation and you will think that it is the man of God who is not anointed or is not a true man of God. Apostle John Chi is sent from God. Then you need to be connected. You need to stay in tune with God when you are here. When I enter churches, most of the time, the first target, if I am not the preacher in that church, because when I am the preacher, my mission is just to lay hands. And once I lay hands, that's all. People will be impacted with those spirits. If I enter a church, that I just sit down, the first target will be the choir. And in the choir, those who are not prayerful, those who are not rooted in the word of God, and those who are loaded with pride, I will get them easily. And we will use that pride in you. Tear it up. You will be standing there, you will be singing out of the talent, but not out of the anointing. People will be hearing the nice voice as you're singing, but with no spiritual effect over the people. Most of the time when we try to reach out to try to attack men of God, most of the time, men of God, you see an angel, somebody who is truly a man of God. You will see an angel always standing by the man of God as a bodyguard. Then when we cannot get to men of God, we will get to their wives. We get to the wife in a way of with distraction, we will cause distraction to the wife that she will not have time to focus, like in prayers, to pray for, to stand on the gap for the husband, or to sit down with her Bible. We will just bring out things that she will need to get busy doing those things. And if the wife of the man of God is somebody who has uh, people around to help her do all those things in the house, we will use another tactic where she will need to exercise her right the right of the wife, that is, she will now become like a thorn into the flesh of the man of God, asking like most of the time she will have to, she need to meet with the man of God as husband and wife. She will use some kind of jealousy, even if it is just a small issue, she will now become an hindrance, a disturbance, just to make sure that the husband will not focus. And the children will we get into their mind and begin to confuse them, just blow their mind into stubbornness, they will no longer focus, they will no longer obey the instructions of their parents in the house. That is why if you are in the choir, please ask, the, ask God to help you with the spirit of humility, be prayerful, and always read the word of God. If you are a pastor's wife, please know that your husband has an assignment and be sensitive Focus, stand on the gap for your husband in prayer and avoid any distraction. Even if you are the child of a pastor, Peter by name, Paul by name, you still need to be born again. So you need to get into the word of God. You need to be prayerful. Always cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Most of the time we enter churches and uh, there are churches where people, they say they are praying and fasting. And if your fasting is not combined with the word of God, your prayer is not combined with the word of God, you are just making noise. And your fasting is just hunger strike. It's not fasting. When we come to you, we will still get you. If your prayer, you are not covering yourself with the blood of Jesus, we will come to you and we will still get you. Toujours, il dit que les gens qui sont dans les églises, qui prennent des journées de jeûne, et ils prient sans l'aide du Saint-Esprit. Ces gens ne font qu'en faire du bruit parce qu'ils ne sont pas couverts avec le sang, du, avec le sang de Jésus-Christ. Vous priez, vous ne faites que faire du bruit et vous serez leur cible potentielle. So, tell us more about the assignment given to you and how you operate, how you carry them out. Uh, this assignment given, given to me, the assignment more on destroying Christian churches, most of the time, I always receive 
uh, instruction through dreams, like what I said a while ago. And sometimes they will talk, they will be talking to me. I will be hearing the voice. I will be, even if I am with the people, the instruction will be given to me. I am awake. I will be hearing what they are telling me, what to do, where to go and carry out the assignment. And I can listen to the instruction very well. Um, I will meet with a lady, even if the picture was not given to me in my dream, and I want to destroy that lady. All I need is to get the name of the lady. Once I get the name of the lady, I will do the incantation with her name. And when I will be talking to her, I just need to touch her. Once I touch the lady, that's all. The lady will be in my box. And most of the time when I'm asking, because that's the strategy I'm using, the strategy of making jokes, there are ladies that I had an affair with them. Uh, I never uh, say to the lady, I love you. I would just go into making jokes with her. And I would just ask the lady if she knows how to massage. The lady, knowing me as a pastor, would try to, like, to make sure, pastor, are you sure of what you're saying? And why me? I would just tell the lady now, no, that's just for massage, nothing else. I will even be the one asking the lady, what is going on in your mind? I just need massage. And I, am, I will feel comfortable with you than somebody else. Because it will be better for you. This lead me to even I will go to the massage parlor and when I meet with any lady that I will meet there, I will have an affair with her inside the massage parlor. I will just propose to her any amount of money. And uh, it leads me to the extent that I began to have an affection for men. And I was being attracted by men, but I, I never had an affair with a man, with any man. Et nous dit que pour ces russes, il demande à une fille si tu peux lui faire le massage. Si tu acceptes cela, tu es déjà dans ta prise potentielle, tu es sa cible, effectif. Et il entre même dans les salons de massage, il propose l'argent aux femmes qui sont là-bas. N'importe quelle somme d'argent que tu demandes, il te donne. C'est comme cela qu'il a les rapports intimes avec toi. Il dit qu'au cours de ce processus, il a commencé à avoir l'affection pour les hommes, mais il n'a jamais, jamais eu une relation avec un homme. If I had an affair with a married woman, her marriage would be scattered. Even pastors, women who are not married, once I have an affair with you, you will now be the one dating men, even though you are a pastor. And all your friends who are men, you go and have an affair with them. So what other things were you into? Man of God, I want to talk about the things like the material things. Uh, people of God, when you see something like this cell phone, in, uh, in our kingdom, we call it the electronic cocaine that we use to get people and uh, through this electronic gadget you have things like games you see the youth now our days we get many of them through electronic gadgets they are playing games you have games like Mortal Kombat you have games like Candy Cross you have many other games once you begin to play the game you become addicted, and once you are addicted, you can, you can never have time to sit down with your Bible, to read the Bible. Even if you have the Bible inside of the cell phone, you cannot, you will not. You even have a Bible beside you, you will not be able to read the Bible. And once you get addicted, you will be impacted with the spirit of anxiety, the spirit of anger. And anything that you like to do, it will always be, you will always be in a hurry. You want result fast, fast. You will not be patient enough. You don't want to wait. And you easily get angry at anyone around you. And on this gadget, you also have things like social media. From the social media, people of God, please be careful when you are exposing everything about your life on social media. You are exposing yourself to Satan. Your wife is pregnant, you bought a car, you have a new house, everything. You are in the CR, you are outside. The enemy is not happy with your blessings. From the social media, we will locate you. We will afflict you together with your blessing. And we make sure we put you down. Does it mean your main target is to make people not to concentrate on their Bibles? Yes, man of God. Not to concentrate, not only the Bible, but anything that has to do with the will of God. The youth, 
once they get involved, they will become stubborn in their houses. Many of them, they will even be sitting in the church. At the end of the service, ask them what was going on in the church. They will not tell you because they were busy on the gadget playing games. Please, if you have all these games installed in your gadget, please uninstall it now for your salvation. There are also so many other things like clothes with the mark of the Illuminati. You have like eyeglasses and you also have things like perfume. There are people, owners of companies of perfume that belong to the Illuminati and sign agreement and oath with the Illuminati. And when you are using this perfume, if you are a lady, before you realize, you begin to have affection for women. Before you realize, you become a lesbian. If you are a man, before you realize when you are using this perfume, it's either you will be attracted by men or you will be having affection for men. Because Alors, il nous dit davantage que lorsque tu as tellement le désir pour avoir des habits de première qualité, il y a des marques qui sont, qui sont sur ces habits. Tes marques qui sont sur ces habits, tes designs sont venant des membres des Illuminati. Lorsque tu portes cela, tu seras impliqué. Et il y a aussi les parfums. Si tu aimes tellement les parfums, si tu es une femme, si tu utilises un parfum, tu auras l'affection pour une femme. Si tu es un homme, ça sera vice versa. So my advice is, anything that you buy in the market, if you see the sign of the pyramid on it, know that you'll be wearing the mark of the Illuminati. Anything you buy in the market, Children of God, people of God, please pray over it, cover it with the blood of Jesus for your own protection, or else you will be wearing the mark of Satan on your body. I was given an assignment. This is when my disobedience began. When they were asking me to go and operate in one of the African country to remove the leader, the head of the state of that country. Because the leader of the opposition asked for our assistance. So I refused to join the assignment. From that time now, they now began to uh, rebuke me because I became disobedient. And uh, because of my disobedience, on the pyramid, on the, on the pyramid, when you get initiated, you are down here, and there is a ladder that you need to climb. And for you to climb on that ladder, it will be based on your loyalty, commitment, and obedience. As you are being given the assignment, instructions, and you obey, that is how it will determine how you will climb the ladder. Down the pyramid is the masses. And up the pyramid is the elite. And the elite are the one who govern the masses. And for you to climb and get to the level of the elite, you need to obey the instruction. One state of the pyramid is 13 step. And the 13 step represent 13 bloodline. The 13 bloodline, as you will be you, they will be asking you to offer sacrifices until 13 bloodline, then you climb one state. Until when you obey all this instruction, all this request, then you get to the level of elite. And uh, it is this year, 2019, that they were supposed to ask me to attend the international meeting that is to take two weeks. So they were, they were still to send me the information about the location, the address, and the date for that meeting. In your quest for looking for powers, what have you achieved? In my quest looking for power, when I was given these materials, the power that I use when I'm preaching in churches, I'll be using it, but it is not a genuine power. 
I will be praying for people, people will manifest, but it is just for that moment. Those who are sick, they will still stay with their sicknesses. This power is not a real power. It is just a power to make like, like camouflage, to make people look at me as a real man of God, a powerful man of God. People will be manifesting, they themselves, they will not know what is happening to them, what uh, influence they are under. That is the power that was given to me. Listen to that. Vous l'avez écouté. This shows that Cela signifie que God has the original. Dieu a l'original. Everything God has the original, Satan has the counterfeit. Dieu the a... photocopy. Dieu a l'original, pourtant Satan a la photocopie. That is why you need to examine everything you see, everything you hear, everything you read. In the light of God's word. When you look at man from outward appearance, selon le point de vue externe, you can be easily deceived. Always examine everything in the light of God's word. Examine toujours toutes choses sur la lumière de la parole de Dieu. Don't be too quick to conclude that this man is a real man of God. Ne sois pas dans la conclu que voici un vrai homme de Dieu. Don't be too quick to conclude that this man is a powerful man of God. Just because he can heal people, he can deliver people, ask God the heart of the matter. C'est pas parce qu'il peut guérir, délivrer les gens qu'il est un homme de Dieu. Il faut demander à l'Éternel le cœur de la terre. Find out the truth, and the truth will set you free. Cherche la vérité et la vérité t'affranchira. Many have been easily misled because they are too quick to trust. Beaucoup ont été induits dans la erreur parce qu'ils sont dans la hâte à faire confiance. That is what is happening to many. C'est ce qui se passe avec plusieurs. Examine everything in the light of God's word. Examine toutes choses sur la lumière de la parole de Dieu. Impatience is costly. L'impatience coûte cher. Your greatest mistake will happen because of impatience. La plus grande erreur va se passer à cause de l'impatience. In all these things you have been doing, what have you achieved? I only achieve in the quest of power, like what I have explained a while ago, in all this drama, I call it drama, drama power. But in real life, there is nothing to show that this is really what I benefit from it. You listen to that? Vous l'avez écouté. There is nothing to show. Il n'a rien montré. Because Satan, the Satan, when he gives you something that gives you temporal peace with his right hand, he will take from you something your life depends on with the left hand. Most of the time, like when I go to churches, I remember this particular church I went one day. I was coming from the hotel with a lady. And I went directly to that church to preach. And I lay hands on the youth. That is the church that received the biggest dose. Because the report from that church now Almost all the youth, the girls there are pregnant. A church. Yes, you sir. went there. Yes, sir. And prayed for them. Yes, sir. And what happened? That day I was coming directly from the hotel with a lady. I had just had an affair with a lady. So I went to that church because I was invited. And as I climb on the pulpit, I pray for them as I pray for them. When I'm praying for people, I don't mention the name Jesus. I will just say in the name of Jesus. So you would think that I'm talking, I'm saying Jesus, but I'm not saying the real Jesus. I just deceive people with the noise. And as I lay hands on the youth in that church, that is the church that received the biggest dose of the spirit of loss. And between them, so many pregnancies came out. People of God, I would also like to talk about the music. If you see these musicians, 99% of them, are Illuminati because in order for them to be famous they need to join and you see them most of them you see them you check their fingers they are wearing rings like this uh, score they are wearing it when they are wearing it if you listen to their music you would if you are a child of God and you're not really rooted in the Word of God you are not prayerful while listening to their music before you realize you will discover that there will be like something that is moving your body. Moving your body. And before you realize, it's either you begin to dance and you begin to sing the music. 
And there are things that most of those musicians are saying that those are incantation. And you don't know that in that incantation, they are worshipping and praising the devil. For example, there is this music that the musician said, Abraka, Braka, Braka, Abraka, Braka. You don't know that that is an incantation that the musician is saying. And you will just be involved in singing the same thing. You don't know that you are praising, you are worshipping Satan at that very moment. And also, young people, ladies, young men, when you see people doing things, please don't just do it by imitation if you don't know the meaning. You see young people now nowadays wearing rings on these fingers, wearing chains on their legs. Those are covenant. As they are wearing those rings on those fingers, this finger is the finger of gay. Even if you are not a gay, as you begin to wear the ring on this finger, you will be, you begin to have affection for men, and you begin to be at, being at, you will be attracted by men. If you don't know the meaning, please don't do it. This is the effect of these rings. And check on your behavior. Men will be lusting after you if you are a woman. If you are a man, you begin to have the spirit of lust, spirit of stubbornness. These are covenant that you have entered into and you don't know. Please, if you are wearing rings on your fingers, stop giving the excuse that it is because the other finger is small or the other finger is big. If the ring cannot fit, please keep it, drop it. Stop wearing rings on the fingers that you don't know the meaning. Aside from being a, a member of the Illuminati, uh, we have what we call the membership portal. Uh, I had access on that member portal. From that member portal, where I log in, we have what we call here the, the library. Here is the screenshot. I got this screenshot because on my Twitter account, the Illuminati shared something on the Twitter. And... I wanted to show to them, they share something on Twitter about the member portal. And I wanted to prove to them that I am already, I already registered, I already have access. So that's the time I got this screenshot to send it to them on Twitter. And on this member portal, you have the dashboard. On the dashboard, this is where you can see the code. If you are a member of the Illuminati, they give you some inspiration. Then from that inspiration, you will be co uh, given some code and you will be hearing as this person said, as this person said. Now, here on the tax, this is where you will be seeing your tax. What is your assignment? If you click on it, you will see on the drop down what is your assignment. It is from the library that I got access to the book on how to manifest money. Then, from that book, now, how to manifest money. There are spirits that I need to contact in order to manifest cash flow. From there, the leader of those spirits is Nitika. This is, I got this because this is the one that appeared to me twice in my room. When I want to make incantation, I want to contact Nitika. And under Nitika, there are other spirits that are under the control of Nitika. So I will enter my room. I will lock the door. I will tell my wife that no matter who is looking for me outside there, she should not disturb me. Then I will lock the door and close my legs like this, make my body straight, straight for my two hands with these two storm looking down. And I will now begin to make incantation. I will begin by saying, I open my way and i will now call nitika three times nitika 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 and i will close my eyes concentrate focus and immediately i will feel the presence of nitika now once i feel the presence of nitika around me when i was doing these things on the first day she did not appear but on the third day she appeared and now ask me what I wanted her to do. 
Then I now call the names of the other spirit. Because that is, those are the instructions on that book. What were you looking for before you begin to go all this? For cash flow. What? Cash flow, money. Money? Yes, sir. And uh, all this spirit under Nitika, this is Raziel. And if I want the, for the cash flow, I will ask Nitika to command Raziel to bring me money, to command if I want Raziel to, if I am angry with somebody, I don't like somebody, and I want Nitika to send Raziel to deal with the person for me, it is in this form that Raziel will go to deal with the person for me. And um, if I want Nitika to use Raziel for me in the form of genius, Nitika will use Raziel in this form, in the form of genius and meditation. If, for example, there is a woman that I want to get the woman, I can so ask, also ask Nitika to use Raziel to help me get that woman. And this is another, another spirit. The name is Libra Beast. All of them, the same function. All I have to do is to ask Nitika to send them. If it is for cash flow, if it is for revenge, if it is for genius, if it is for a woman. This is Cesera. The same. The same functionality. I just need to ask uh, Nitika to command them, to send them at work using that book. This is another, another spirit, Liabul. The same functionality. So those okay. spirits are under Nitika, but I need to be specific what assignment I want them to carry out for me. And Nitika will go ahead and send them out. And for, for the money, my advice is, because in that book, one of the instructions is if to manifest cash flow, I can take like 10,000 francs CFA, and I go in a place where I know it is a public place, but I need to make sure that somebody will not, no one will see me. I need to drop that money there. I, I shouldn't come back to check if the person took the money. I should not go and hide somewhere to check if somebody is taking the money. All I have to do is make sure in this place, somebody will surely get this money. Drop the money there and walk away. And once the person picked the money, every money that that person will be touching, or anyone connected to the person, that money will be flowing to me. Voilà, chez le spectateur, il nous dit que sa raison principale, son but majeur, de faire partie des Illuminati, c'était d'avoir de l'argent. Vu le fait, vu le fait qu'il était membre impliqué dans cette association des Illuminati, il a eu accès à la bibliothèque des Illuminati. Il vient de montrer les différentes photos qu'on lui a données, vu le fait qu'il avait accès à cette bibliothèque. And my advice is. Yes, somebody can lose money, the money can fall. But any money that you see on the floor, do not even touch the money. Because after making the incantation, the influence is too much to the extent that you might not remember to pray even. So just walk away from that money. Don't touch it. So your advice is that when you see money on the floor, don't pick it. Don't pick it, yes. Et si conseille le peuple de Dieu que si vous voyez l'argent quelque part, il ne faut pas ramasser cet argent parce qu'avant de jeter cet argent, il a fait ses incantations. Now I will be talking about the signs of the Illuminati. The project for the New World Order. In that project, the mark of the beast is one of the things that people need to receive. The mark of the beast will be given. Now they will deceive people by saying that it is the revolution or the evolution of technology. But it is the mark of the beast. It's either you receive it on your right hand, on your right hand here, 
or you will receive it on your forehead. And the mark of the beast is the triple six, the six, six, six. If you read Revelation chapter 13, you can see it there from verse 16. You can see it there, the mark of the beast. So it is either on your right hand in the form of a microchip. And what they are going to impose to people is that if you don't have this, you will not be able to buy, you will not be able to sell. So this is what they are going to do. That is the ongoing project right now. So if you want to buy or you want to sell, you must have the mark either on your right hand or on your forehead. And another sign of the Illuminati is this one, the pyramid, with the all-seeing eye in the middle. When you are doing it anywhere you are, you invoke them, get their attention, they locate you where you are. The all-seeing eyes when you do it, it also in a sign of your protection, your own protection in that place. That is why if like you're carrying out some like public activities, manifestation, you will be protected by them and you will be inspired. They will be giving you some kind of inspiration that you yourself, you will not even understand where it is coming from on what to do at that particular moment. This one is the mark the mark of the beast when you make three fingers it form six 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 and the three horn of satan this one is the devil's horn also known as el diablo my advice is if they give you a name as El Diablo, please delete that name from your life. And it also means when you're doing this, it means I love you, Satan. I worship you, Satan. Every time you are doing this. Here is the picture that I got, I sent to them. I sent this picture to them together with the oath and also on their Twitter account as a proof that I got the talisman and I am wearing it as required. On the member portal, there is a place they call community. From that community, that is where you can chat with all the Illuminati members worldwide. If you have any question that you want to ask, you can ask your question from there and you will receive the answer. So it was from there now that I went on internet, I searched on the, about the Freemason in the Philippines, and I saw this pillar lodge, number three, the nearest that was in my place. And I went there to join. That's why I am on this picture with them. They took me inside. You can see on, the, on this arrow, I am the one standing here. The only black person among them standing here and for me to join one of the their requirement the first requirement in order for me to be initiated i need to bring my wife so what do you want all these powers for i wanted that when i'm using the power it will be very easy for me uh, for people to bring money to me when I will be asking them to bring money and I will have enough money to take care of my family and to support even my parents back home. Il dit que toute sa requête, sa quête, c'était uniquement d'avoir du pouvoir pour prendre soin de lui et ses membres de la famille. When this occultic group now, they asked me to bring my wife, I went and told my wife, my wife was very angry, but I lied to her, I told her that no, I am a spy, don't be angry. We will just go there, then nothing will happen. And uh, before I discovered, I now began to receive requests. This man who used to appear to me in a dream, appeared to me asking me 
for my son, that they need my son. Then I asked him why they need my son. He told me that no, they just want to use my son and that if ever I am no longer around, my son can take over my place. So I told him right from the beginning, I asked all these questions. I was told that I don't need to give any human sacrifice. They said, no, it is not human sacrifice. They just need my son, that I need to bring my son. It is time for me to bring my son. So that is when I now became afraid that, A, when I ask this fraternity also, I have all the conversation with this fraternity on my Facebook. When I asked one of the members that why they are asking me to bring my wife, he told me the same thing, that they are a, ch a charitable group and that I would, they would just want to let my wife know that I'm joining that charitable group so that my wife would know where I belong to. Then I asked what would be the outcome when my wife comes. He said he still give the same answer. So I realized that this is how, even when I joined the Illuminati, this is, those are the kind of answers they were giving me. They didn't tell me the real truth. So now that I am already inside, this is, it is the time now they are asking me to bring my son. The pressure now from them became too much. As the pressure became too much, I got to the point where all the money that I'm earning, I'm earning more than 1.5 million a month. There is nothing I can show. It, they just, once the salary is out, they just give me this instruction of going out with women. I will just pay that money, all that money in hotels, paying women. And at the end of the day, I will still find myself, I will even find myself again going to borrow money in order for me to provide for my wife and the child in the house. And uh, it came to the point where they told me, they give me a warning that if I will not bring, it is time to bring my son, if I will not bring my son, the car that they gave to me, they will take it back. I told my wife that this car, we need to give it away. She asked me what is the meaning of that. I told her that no, we just give it away. We will buy another car because we have so many bills now to settle. So we look for somebody to take the car. The person got the car and pay us the money that we, we requested from him. Then two weeks later, he sent us the picture. He had a terrible accident on the highway. If you see the picture, the car was destroyed both front and back. And the good thing is that man is also a true born again Christian. But he came out without any injury. So after that car accident from that man, I now became very afraid that I knew that as I keep on resisting, because what I'm telling them is to give me more time, that I will give my son, but they just need to give me more time. And uh, I became afraid after that accident that any moment they can take my life away. That's how I began looking for solution. I was going to churches there in the Philippines, no longer in the form of going to preach, but with an expectation that I can enter a church and maybe the power of God will locate me and I will be delivered. But I will enter a church and instead I will not feel anything. Instead I will now carry out again the assignment in confusing the people's mind as they are sitting in the church, those who are not in the attitude of prayer, I will make them, cause them to sleep while the message is going on. And I will come out of that church the same way I came, no deliverance. That is how I now said, I need to go to Africa. My plan was to go to the synagogue church of all nations to Prophet T.B. Joshua. And uh, even the money for the flight ticket, it was not easy for me. And somebody in my position to take leave, the highest they can give me is three days absence. But how am I going to do to take a long leave in order for me to travel to Africa? Then I lied to my HR that my mother died. I even provided a fake death certificate because that was the requirement in order for the company to let me go. That's how they granted my request. Then I now went on internet to book for my flight ticket, Manila to Lagos, using my ATM card. I tried to pay, it didn't went through, even though I had money inside. 
then I used the option of book now, pay later. I had only four hours to confirm the ticket. I went out, I printed it out, I went out to one of the agency, they are selling flight ticket. I asked them if they could confirm the ticket from their end and I would just pay them in cash. They said yes. As I gave the lady the paper, I went out to withdraw money from the ATM. When I came back, the lady already confirmed the flight ticket. And when I checked the ticket, instead of Manila, Lagos, it was Manila, Simalen. I told the lady, no, look at the paper that I gave you. It is not Manila, Simalen, it should be Manila, Lagos. The lady said, okay. She went back to her computer because there is an, uh, an option, click on manage your booking to change the destination. The funny thing is that even the option, that option manage your booking was not available. I thought she was joking. She called me. She said, sir, come and check. I went on her computer. It was not possible to change the booking. So I was shocked. Then I said, okay, let me just use the ticket. When I get to Cameroon, I will book for another ticket going to Lagos. It is true. I lied to my company that my mother died. But my mother is still alive till now. And I hope my mother will forgive me if in case she received this information. Then in Yaoundé, I now book for another ticket, Simalen to Lagos. And just for me to realize that the, flight, the booking, the money was deducted from my account, but the booking was canceled. As the booking was canceled now, I was confused. I was really disturbed. I almost run crazy in that place because I know that this time there is no more help for me and they will get me. So in this attitude of being disturbed, somebody noticed and the person asked me, what is wrong? What is going on? Then I explained to the person, I want to go and fellowship at the synagogue in Lagos. But that is how the man look at me and he told me do you know that the son of prophet tibi joshua apostle john chi is here in cameroon before the day i left the philippines i received this same man in my dream and showed me a picture of a lady here in cameroon in yaoundé before i left cameroon I knew that lady. She was not a born again. She was not even a pastor. So when I received this picture of this lady, the instruction was that as I'm getting to Cameroon, I need to meet the lady and carry out my assignment. So when I arrived in Yaoundé, I stay, I went to the lady, I stay in the house of that lady. I found out that she is now a pastor. And she has a church. And since I arrived, I was staying in her, her house. I'm staying in her house. And I even took over her pulpit. Because she knew me as a pastor. She gave me the pulpit. I am now the one preaching. I will finish preaching. And we will go home. And I will have an affair with her. And the membership of that church is now going down. And we even went to the family of that lady to see the parents because her plan is that I will marry her. Marry her again? <laughs> and the one that I married there in the Philippines, we have one child who is more than one year old and right now she's seven months pregnant. For you? Yes, sir. After I received this information from this man in Yaoundé, he told me that he used to fellowship, he's a member of the Ark of God's Covenant Ministry. And he encouraged me by telling me that going to Boya, you don't need to pay for a flight ticket. Just go. So I now make up my mind, schedule for the day to come. Then I was supposed to travel on Friday morning, on Friday. On Thursday night, I received a warning in my dream. This man appeared to me, the journey you are about to take tomorrow, don't go. We don't want you to go there. If you go there, it's either you will be on your own or make sure you carry out the assignment there successfully. The same assignment as usual in other churches to cause confusion in the mind of 
those who are not in the attitude of prayer causing them to sleep while they are sitting in the church while the message is going on and to make sure to attack the man of God that Friday I left the house and I arrived here on Sunday morning here in the church people of God when I entered this place I was confident of myself knowing that I have I've been carrying out the assignment in other churches there in the Philippines I knew that I was going to do the same thing but when I entered the church premises I was not comfortable as the praise and worship was going on I was not myself I was like I need to go out but it was like something was keeping me in this place and as I was there as the praise and worship became more stronger it was like the fire was too much and uh, the backup came when these my people came for assistance we strike the electricity many times but the, the time that we hit it very harder to shut down the electricity because once we shut down the electricity 99% of the congregation will feel discouraged and we, we are sure the, ser the service will not go on and if when the service will not go on that is one victory that we already have we will saturate the place the prayer will not be going on and we will go after the man of God and the wife once we strike the electricity people of God the angels of God were everywhere I mean, while you were here, your aim was to shut down the electricity. Yes, sir. And what happened? When we strike, it was the chariots of angels. They were everywhere in this place. And the fire was too much to the extent that my team, they were all defeated. They took off. They could not resist anymore. As they took off, myself, I was supposed to run. But I was chained. And I was like, I am inside of the cage. So I couldn't do anything anymore. I could not run. I had no choice but to stay. And when the mass prayer began, that is where the whole pain, the fire, it was like they were pouring fire from above all over my body. I could not resist anymore. The fire was burning. The fire was too much everywhere. And... As the man of God was talking, I was not hearing the voice of the man of God. There was a giant man standing behind the man of God. So as a servant, I have a master I'm looking up to. En tant que serviteur, j'ai un maître à qui, à qui je compte. I will only act according to his instructions. J'ai un maître sur qui je compte autant pour moi, sur lequel je vais agir selon son instruction. I only to back. Once the master hears my voice, he has to come out. Lorsque le maître entend ma voix, il doit intervenir. This giant man behind the man of God, the light was coming out of that man that I could not look at that light. I had to close my eyes. Every time the man of God stretched forth his hand towards me, it was like, the hand of that man was instead the one coming from his back. And when that hand will hit me, it's like the big hammer. And the weight was too much. And every time, pushing me to go on my knees. Pushing me to go down. That I could not resist. Now, because of the fire, the ring had to get out of my hands. Because it was burning too much. And uh, when I, I, I wanted to... Uh, contact again the backup. I asked the, for the fire to be removed. And when the fire was put off, when I was getting back my ring, I was confident enough that even if the backup is not coming, just because of this ring, my protection is sure. And I was going to deal with the man of God in this place. Okay, let me call my own master. In the name of Jesus Christ!
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Once the name Jesus was mentioned, it was as if the giant man behind the man of God, the ancients of days, it was together with the light coming from him, and it was as if he gathered all his power and hit me with, and I could not resist anymore when on the floor. Hello? Hello? When the name Jesus was mentioned, and this power and together with the light hit me, I went down. I felt like I was in a trance at that particular moment. In that trance, it was the, the angels were all over around me, and they were picking whatever belonged to the Illuminati out of me, picking it, throwing it in the fire, the fire that was around. My stomach was now big. There was, that was the last item from the Illuminati in my stomach. Now, it, it happened in that trance. My stomach opened up. And this thing rolled on the floor. They pick it, the angel pick it, and throw it in the fire. That was the last item that, from the Illuminati. When the angels pick it and throw it in the fire. Because all these, my team, they were now defeated. They could not step in this place anymore. After they throw it in the fire, my stomach closed back again. Because when I'm watching on the clip, that is the time the hand of the man of God was stretched on me. And my stomach closed back again. And I became very light. That's the time I got up, I realized that I was on the floor. I got up and I realized I was in front of many people. And the man of God was in front of me. At that time, I became very light in such a way that if you just blow me with the air, I could fall. Because I became very light after that, left, that thing left my body. I want to thank God for my deliverance, for setting me free, and for making me a changed person in this new year. Because... Son cœur est rempli d'allégresse et les larmes témoignent le fait de sa joie. I love my son so much. Among all the children, four children that I have, he's the only son. He's the only son? Yes, man of God. My friend, we joined the Illuminati together. Okay, you joined the group together? Yes, sir. But uh -huh. he's a pastor. A pastor too? Yes, sir. Ronda! Yesterday. <laughs> Yesterday they sent me the information on Facebook. They found him dead. Then the first question I asked them what happened. They said he was not sick. They don't know what happened. And I believe he also received the same pressure, the same request. And if if I was still in the Philippines by now, maybe for Jesus Christ for sending his life. What the man of God said that either my son will go, my child will go, or me, it was true. Because that's the pressure I had that I had to, it was time for me to give my son. And I thank God, thank God for using his servant God is in this place, and today I am free. I am free indeed. Thank you, Jesus. It is by the love of Jesus Christ, the love of God, that He is alive today. Do not be in a haste to achieve certain things in life. Be patient. Wait for God's time. Attends le temps approprié. God's time is always the best. Attends le temps approprié. Everything is beautiful at God's time. Or I want to advise anyone, young or old, if you got into this same situation, there is no salvation there. The end is hellfire. Please run for your deliverance wherever you are. Those who are traveling to are going to abroad, 
please, when things become difficult, make your way back home so that you will not be tempted to get into this kind of situation. After I received my deliverance, I now went on my laptop. I tried to access the member portal again. I discovered that I don't have access anymore. L'évidence que Jésus Christ est changement de vie. Because when I try to access after my deliverance, I discover that they signed me out. I don't they have signed you out. They have signed me out. It means you are no longer part of them. I'm no longer part of them. If you are in any occultic group, you are a pastor, you are not a pastor, please run to any living church and seek for your deliverance for your salvation because the end is hellfire and if you are a pastor and you were trying to use this this kind of means because you want to be famous <laughs> I, I will tell you this is fake and it is purely satanic if also you are a pastor and you are inviting preachers to your church please do not let preachers not every preachers to lay hands on your church members because it is very dangerous they will be impacted with the spirit of loss spirit of lies telling stealing and all manner of demons to recognize the illuminatis a sign from the physical signs which are like wearing the talisman wearing the link the rings and making signs like with the fingers that's the only way you can recognize them but if you don't see those signs you may not recognize them now to escape from them it is only prayer be a genuine christian rooted in the word of god be prayerful and always cover yourself with the word of god do not have the love of material things Things like rings, if you don't know the meaning of the ring, do not use it so that you will not be a victim. If, if you see clothes, even eyeglasses, there are eyeglasses that if I see, I will recognize that this is from the Illuminati. Because of the mark on it, you can see either the small pyramid or you will see the all-seeing eye on it. But unless you carefully pay attention, you may not recognize Worldly music, children should not get into it. If they say they are born again, let them worship the Lord with worship song. Yes. Do not allow the magnetic attraction of worldly pleasures draw you and your family away from God. I've encountered true men of God, but when it comes to the grace for deliverance, this is where I really encounter it, the genuine one, in the Ark of God's Covenant Ministry. Because this is the only place that just as I enter, I was not feeling comfortable. Just the fact that I entered in the premises of the church, I was not feeling comfortable. The only place, I'm asking the help of the man of God, I don't want to go back to my old life, I want God to use the man of God to point me to the right direction. So what lesson have you learned? The lesson that I learned from this is that there is no true peace outside of God. There is no genuine blessing outside of God. Because only the blessing of the Lord that make rich and added no sorrow. My advice to the youth is that surrender your life to Jesus. Do not do things by imitation because you have seen others doing. And if you travel to abroad, even if you are here in Cameroon, and things seem difficult, please run to God for solution. Do not put your hands 
in things that would take you, would cost your life or cost the life of your children or take you to hell. Please do not waste time because you don't know the day if you are into this kind of situation. Do not waste time. Like, like my friend yesterday, I was not expecting to receive the news that my friend is gone. You don't know the time. They can get you anytime. Please run for your deliverance, for the salvation of your soul. And no matter how difficult your situation is right now, please do not fall into that temptation. Seek the face of God. And God will direct you what to do instead of choosing by yourself. Remember, Jesus Christ did not went to the tempter. It was the tempter who went to Jesus. But in my case, I am the one who went to the tempter. So, please, do not follow my example. Go to God, and God will help you. Man of God, I brought all these items. I don't want to use them anymore. And I want God to use you to destroy them. Everything will be destroyed. Amen. Tout sera détruit. Tout ce matériel satanique sera détruit. Thank you, Jesus.